Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for joining this special edition of The Final Bar. We're talking about the five hidden features on stock charts. And again, over the last uh, number of years as chief market strategist, I've enjoyed so much learning very deeply the stock charts platform. I still have so much to learn. And, and uh, people like Grayson Rose, Tom Boley, Arthur Hill, Greg Schnell, Chip Anderson, Grayson Rose, if I didn't mention them already, um, are, are, are super knowledgeable. They are the power users. I feel like even though I, uh, I'm pretty nimble getting around the stock charts platform, I still learn a ton from, uh, from talking to those guys and watching some of the great content they're putting out on uh, Stock Charts TV and on the StockCharts.com uh, uh, articles page. But I wanted to do with this series is just highlight some of the things that I found uh, often that are sort of hidden, things that aren't uh, maybe as obvious as they could be, but I found the people that use them really find value in, uh, in how they add to their ability to analyze stocks and ETFs more effectively. Today, we're actually going to talk about trend lines. Now, trend lines are a feature a lot of people use on our platform. I'm just going to share with you some of the things that I find, I find people are unfamiliar with that I think would make their ability to use trend lines uh, more and more effective. At the end, by the way, I'm going to share with you a couple articles or one in particular that comes to mind that will help you understand how to use trend lines, how they might add value to your process if you've, uh, if they've, not, if you've not used them uh, 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 too much uh, on our platform. So we're looking at a stock, Valero Energy, VLO. This is a stock we've talked a lot about on the final bar because I think it's a great example of energy uh, stocks in 2022 and just the emerging strength that you've seen. Valero had a nice run in uh, late 2020 into early 2021. From there, this basing pattern. And a basing pattern is basically when you have a run higher, and then you have this sideways consolidation phase. So you think about it as buying power is overwhelming selling pressure. Or anecdotally, you think buyers are outweighing sellers. Then all of a sudden, there's an equilibrium. You know, This is a pretty good range between $60 and $80 a share or so over, uh, over about a 12-month period. But really, it revolved around that $70 level. And so we traded above and below and is mean reverting around that midpoint. Something changed in early 2022. And you can see that all of a sudden, instead of finding resistance at $80 a share, we broke out. Instead of pulling back within the range, we actually rotated higher. And now uh, we see uh, from a stable resistance level, we now have a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. The stock is now trending above its 50-day moving average, consistently moving uh, up and to the right, strong trend. Beyond that, you have the uh, momentum that has overall been fairly constructive. You have the relative strength, which has made new highs each of the last uh, couple months. So overall, this is a strong chart among strong charts in the energy sector. So the way we use trend lines, and again, you're probably familiar with this if you've used the stock charts platform, right below on sharp charts, you have this annotate button. And I should point out, if you use the stock charts ACP platform, a little different, but a lot of the same uh, methodology to it, we're actually in the process of upgrading all of these annotation tools. This will give you a good sense of how to use them uh, for now. So if you click on annotations, you get this little annotations toolbar that pops up on the left side of your chart. I'm automatically selecting trend lines, and you can see that I have a lot of choices to, uh, to use here, you know, in terms of color, in terms of the width of the line, the style of the line, whether I want to turn it into an arrow, something like that. And PIN is just keeping this toolkit up, uh, this, uh, this palette up to make it a little easier to, uh, to, uh, to analyze things. The very simple way you put on a trend line is you select trend line. You click on one point and you drag it to another and you've drawn your uh, drawn your line. That's pretty sim uh, pretty straightforward. And at the end, if you click on the X or hit on save, it'll close the annotations engine, ask if you want to save it. And you probably do. And uh, it'll ask you what chart list you want to save it to. And you will have a uh, saved version of those trend lines that you've put on there. I always encourage people when they're using annotations or any of these tools on a chart, don't treat your chart like a picture, something like you want it to look nice and pristine, hanging on a wall. Um, I have charts behind me on the wall, so I actually do think that there's some value to that sometimes. But on an electronic chart, on a, in a, in a digital version of a chart that you're using on our website, I would have, I would think of charts as more of a dialogue you're having with the market. Use the charts to think about, uh, you know, to think about what you're seeing and then use annotations, use uh, trend lines, use the, um, the, the text tools, uh, the call out feature, all of these different uh, tools, uh, shadings uh, to, uh, to help capture your thinking. The point of looking at these charts uh, over time is to think about how your interpretation of the chart patterns uh, change. And only by putting these trend lines on the chart and saving your, uh, your annotations can you really remember what you were thinking. But let's say I want to do a trend line here, right? $80 a share was pretty significant. That was resistance here in March. 
resistance again in June, resistance in October. We broke through there in January of this year, then pulled back to that same $80 level. So what a lot of people would do is take a trend line and try to make a just a perfectly horizontal line. I bet I could do it. Maybe that's right. And then I save it. And uh, hopefully we were pretty good. Here's the thing, though. There's actually a really neat trick you can do. Once you start dragging it, on a Mac keyboard, you hit the command key. And on the, uh, I don't actually use a PC. I haven't used a PC for a number of years, but I know there's a, a version on the PC and I'll show you where you can find that if you are a PC user. But if you're a Mac user, just hold down the command key. And when you move your mouse, it's gonna give you a perfectly horizontal line. I use this a hundred times a day, if not more. I did not know this feature until Chip Anderson was uh, using it, looking at a chart, we're looking at it together. And, uh, and I saw him do that. I was like, whoa, what did you just do? And he showed me this trick and uh, I was hooked. It is a perfect way to get a perfectly horizontal line. By the way, if you want a vertical line, if you want to identify a low point or something, uh, just draw a trend line instead of trying to make it a horizontal, just hit the command key. And if you go close to a horizontal uh, you know, point from your starting point, it's going to make a horizontal line. If you go vertical, it's going to turn it into a vertical line. This can be a great way to identify cycles or to sort of visually indicate a turning point, a starting point, a stopping point, whatever it is. An, an entry point is a great way to, um, to save buy and sell uh, points. If you want to save a moment in time and just indicate visually, this is when I bought, this is when I sold. Do a green vertical line when you bought, a red vertical line when you sold, or something like that it can be a great way to sort of track your uh, your trading. So uh, the trick was you left click, you start dragging, and then hold the command key down. It'll give you a perfectly horizontal line. Great way to, uh, to do that uh, feature. By the way, if you have no idea what I just told you, if you're trying to remember it uh, later, there's this little uh, question mark which actually has a bunch of these, uh, say there's some uh, hotkeys, some um, some keyboard shortcuts that are embedded in uh, in stock charts that are relevant to annotations and also some, um, some features particular to uh, specific annotations. So this thing where I showed you uh, command and drag uh, handle to snap an angle in 90 degree increments, that's what I just showed you. There are a bunch of other things we're not gonna get to, uh, but this is the way to, uh, to, uh, to do it. So uh, hold down command to, uh, to do that. The other thing you can do, and if we go back to this, uh, to this list, you can actually add a arrow and you can do that. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Shift and click after creation. Perfect. I create my trend line. Let's do um, this one right here. And instead of, uh, instead of uh, doing this, if I click shift, and click on that end, you can see it turns it into an arrow. Now there are ways you can do that up by messing with these uh, with these items up here. But what we found with power users, once you use the platform, you, it's all about uh, speed and stability. And in terms of speed and stability, using some of these keyboard shortcuts can uh, eliminate some uh, some happy fingers where you're clicking on the wrong things. And once you get comfortable with the platform, it's really easy. I usually have one hand on the mouse or on the trackpad, the other left hand over here. Um, on the uh, on the uh, you know left letter keys and command and shift in those, you're able to use the annotations platform uh, pretty well. Uh, another one that I will do, and I'm just going to uh, clean off all these lines here. So if you hit the uh, trash can, by the way, is the uh, next one that will actually clear off all your annotations. If you hit the little undo button, that'll un unwind one uh, annotation at a time. There are a number of other things on here. Another, another feature that I use pretty often are the Fibonacci retracements. And what I will show you is if you left click and drag, you get these Fibonacci levels, but there are also other things you can do by it. And again, if we click on the question mark, you go down to Fibonacci retracements, you can see some of these different uh, items that we, can, uh, that we can do. So if you command and drag, it actually adds another level. We have a 23.6% level, which is usually hidden, but you can add it on there. We also, if you, uh, if you hold down the command key and left click, on uh, these uh, horizontal trend lines, you can see I'm adding the numerical values and subtracting them. So sometimes for cleanliness, I like to just put the percent retracement levels. Other times I like to click again and add the price values. I actually usually leave it this way because I'm usually wanting to know the price values. But if you're just trying to make a cleaner chart, uh, that can allow you to, uh, to simplify the visual just a, uh, a little bit. So I should note when you uh, click on this little question mark, it's giving me the uh, hotkeys because I'm running a Mac. If you would run this on a, um, a PC, the, uh, the language is going to be a little different. It's going to tell you the right, uh, the right buttons you need to hit on your particular keyboard uh, to allow you to run these, uh, run these, uh, run these different items.
Now, let's say you have no idea what I was just talking about when I'm talking about trend lines. So for example, in the chart of Valero, there's a pretty good trend line taking the low from October, the low from December, and tracking that as the longer term trend. But you can also see some of these shorter term trend lines if I would draw them taking some of these pullback areas uh, along the way. So what are the right trend lines to draw? Well, if you go to Chart School, which is in the uh, in the top uh, the top of our uh, of our um, uh, stock charts website, there's some really good content on here. Hopefully, you're familiar with Chart School, and I almost did one of the the five videos this week just on Chart School because I think it is a fantastic repository of uh, of uh, market knowledge. But if you click on there, there are a bunch of articles, particularly to technical analysis. And, and this first one called Overview is what I would like to leave you with. And the reason why I want to do that is because there are some really cool articles in here. There's articles just explaining what technical analysis is and why it's helpful. Talking about a random walk, the efficient markets type uh, hypothesis, and whether or not price action is based on random walks or non-random walks. Some really fascinating uh, discussion in there and examples basically explaining why a random walk uh, uh, theory really doesn't fully explain price behavior. You also have John Murphy's 10 Laws of Technical Trading, which I would absolutely encourage you to check out. I'm going to point one of my favorite articles down here, which is Richard Donkian's uh, 10, 20 Trading Guidelines. The reason why I want to highlight uh, this one is I, when I was president of the CMT Association a number of years ago, I was president of the CMT Association 2010 to 2014. It was a a lot of work and uh, a fa fantastic experience that uh, I'm, I'm so thankful for. And I met some people that have become lifelong friends, to be honest with you, in the, uh, in the financial industry. But uh, one of the things I got to do was award Richard Donkian uh, is, uh, a, a, an award recognizing his contribution. Unfortunately, it's after uh, he, have, uh, he had, of course, had uh, passed away because he was uh, active really in the, uh, in the early, mid 20th century. But a lot of his techniques are really uh, you know, continue to be used today. A lot of the techniques that I show on on uh, the final bar every day are really born from a lot of his uh, methodologies. He's known as the father of trend following. And if you go down in this article, uh, you I wanted to highlight this particular uh, item here, which talks about major trend lines and minor trend lines. A lot of the different points in here talk about specific methodologies of how to apply trends and his nine technical guidelines, I think are just absolutely fantastic. Talks about different phases in the market, talks about how to use trend lines to define those, those phases and how to determine when a trend may be broken using trend line analysis. So if you're not super familiar with it, and besides just drawing a line on the chart, you really don't know how it could add value to your analytical process, I would go to chart school, go to this article by Richard uh, Donkin and go through really about his, him and his work Go through his general guidelines on investing, which tells you a lot about just money management and how to think about market activity. But the nine technical guidelines specifically talk about phases and how to use trend lines to define those phases. And I find that can uh, a lot of uh, for a lot of investors can add a little more rigor, a lot of more a little more discipline to your use of trend lines on stock charts. So that was a quick quick run through some of the hidden parts of our trend line uh, tools. That's using the annotation engine. Uh, what we call the chart notes feature on stockcharts.com. I would encourage you to check that out. Click on the little uh, question mark to uh, get all the little tips and tricks, uh, some of which I showed in this video, but others we don't have time to uh, get to. There are a lot of cool features when you're analyzing uh, your charts. And uh, to, to close off, do not treat your charts as a pristine, beautiful picture that is not meant to be touched. Uh, charts are meant to be interacted with. I would think of them as a dialogue and running dialogue and ongoing dialogue uh, you can have with a particular chart. That's the way you can track your thinking and improve your process over time. For stockcharts.com, I'm Dave Keller. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe. We'll back with you again soon. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.